Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners welcome to this online course on writing skills i'm dr divya gupta an assistant professor at gla university mathra and today we are going to start with dialogue writing we all have different different experiences and we all know how to communicate well with our near and dear ones and obviously with our senior professors with our higher management then we know we everybody uh, each one of us actually knows it very well how to communicate how to leave an indelible expression or impression on our seniors our tone changes am i right yes obviously our tone changes sometimes we follow formal tone and others and at other times we follow informal style of conversation but what brings about the difference between them how these things are relevant enough to leave a very nice impression on the other person it's all about dealing with it and once you create a wonderful you can say a wonderful prior practice or you might have done some kind of like um written material then i am pretty much sure that you would be a wonderful dialogue writer as well once you have created that performa beforehand you would be able to act in a perfect manner so with this note in our previous lectures you have already learned how to write down the perfect examples the perfect versions of all those long and short compositions and throughout these lectures you people have been honing your skills skills of communication skills of listening sp skills of speaking reading and writing because all these things are interrelated a good listener is a good speaker but in the middle of it once you listen it and you speak something you need to write it very well that creates a link and there are some tips there are some tactics that you all have to follow being a human being each one of us actually communicates no matter in oral form or in written form but when it comes to a written category we generally feel a little bit awkward why because sometimes we feel short of words sometimes we are unaware about the format that we should follow and other times what happens like our body language is not according to the mark which is required so remember my dear learners now we are going to start with dialogue writing now this dialogue writing will help you certainly in learning the special tips in learning the varieties of dialogues and conversation and obviously you will talk about the differences between the their their types talking about monologue dialogue we'll come across all these things so let's begin with this and let's begin the journey of learning dialogue writing now with us let's start so in this particular lecture after going through this lecture my dear learners you would be able to learn the difference between monologue and dialogue you all will get to know the nuances the nuances of writing the dialogues and monologues as, as well their importance on each side because everything in this world has its own importance my dear learners right 
when you talk about dialogues, they have their own importance, they have their own relevance, impact. In the same manner, when you talk about monologue, also it is very important. There are many examples in Shakespearean plays where you talk about monologue. Obviously, when you talk about Romeo and Juliet, there is a wonderful example when Romeo stands on that uh, uh, balcony and then he just think, he thought about certain, um, certain views and expresses his love for Juliet at that time. So, so that was all monologue, telling something to the audience, to the readers, not to the other person in the play, not physically speaking anything to anyone. So, now in this matter, please remember you would be able to learn the difference between them and further after learning their difference, you would be able to learn the different types of dialogues as well. There are sometimes narrative, sometimes there are conversational, sometimes you ask questions. So, inquiry letter, inquiry dialogues, there are many types of them. We will come across with the help of relevant examples so that you people will understand the change of tone, change of language, change of grammar usage when you talk about all those types of dialogues. Now, further we move upon and talk about the importance of dialogues in anybody's life. How does it leave an indelible impact on the listener or on the other speaker as well? And then further you would be able to know how to enhance your communication skills because that is the sole aim actually. Why are you learning letter writing? What is the use of learning advertisement writing? What is the use of learning business letters, application for the job and report writing, article writing? Sole aim is to be a very good or have or acquire the skills of communication. This is our aim. So, above all, you learn dialogue writing and you hone your skill of communications in that condition because this is the sole aim no matter you are of any field. Now, in this condition, these are the learning outcomes of our lecture and further we will go on with the content. So, what are, this, what are the contents that you are going to follow, that you are going to learn in this? You are going to do the introduction first of all. Then after introduction, you have to, you just would uh, be able to learn the format of writing a dialogue. There are many uh, requisites also, like you will learn all those, all of them. Then after requisites, after those format of, the, after that learning the whole format, the sequence and the way of presentation, you would be able to learn the dialogue tags. That is something new for you, I hope, my dear learners dialogue tags and then further you would be able to learn the ellipses. Ellipses and ellipses along with that you would be able to know the purpose of dialogue writing. What is the dire need of learning this dialogue writing? So, that dire need, that importance you would be able to learn with me. So, with this note we shall move forward towards the introduction of dialogue writing. Now, when I talk about communication, my dear learners, when I talk about communication, there are three types. There are three ways of communication, you can say. On the broader category, if I say, obviously, they are formal and informal. And when we talk about from formal and informal category, they could be through telephone, they, they could be through face-to-face -face interaction conversation, but what are the ways of communication? It could be monologue, second it could be a normal conversation and third it would be the dialogues. Sole purpose is to communicate whatever is there in your heart, whatever is there in your brain, what is the purpose of that communication to resolve some query. So, what is monologue? Mono word clearly indicates that single, right? Right, my le learners, everyone. Mono is single, and 
and and uh, looking at this particular thing monologues origin if i talk about this particular terminology that has erupted or you can say originated from the greek word and that greek word is monologos and this monologos means speaking alone that is very clear have you ever interacted with yourself yes it is like that only monologue is talking to yourself right that means the speaker talks about talks to himself sometimes planning sometimes exhibiting what his need is or what his desire is sometimes exhibiting his true character so monologue plays a very important role in any kind of story drama long composition you will learn that monologue is talking to oneself talking to oneself if i want to talk to myself that will be called monologue no other person will uh, no physical person in front of me would be able to listen that one so that is called monologue further they are generally used in drama plays film poetry as if i told you novels as if i told you shakespearean plays are wonderful example of it where you find to be or not to be or we find several examples in uh, uh, antony and cleopatra macbeth othello hamlet many examples are there and even recently i will quote few more examples in the later slides so that you would be able to learn exactly what monologue is where writer where where the writer or the speaker is speaking to himself and the other character is not able to listen it so in that condition remember my dear learners that will be that is an important element which which depicts the character's dilemma if he is swinging between two decisions between two sides then that decision that dilemma would be exhibited in front of you through that monologue so to exhibit the character's dilemma shakespeare has employed dramatic monologue that i have already explained you display character's minor feelings and thoughts and whatever is going on in his brain in his mind exhibits planning sometimes planning sometimes repent repentance if he is feeling guilty out of anything so all those things all those feelings are exhibited in front of the readers through that monologue only sometimes it indicates the plot of the story that is for sure where the poetry where the whole story is going to lead so that is called monologue understood everyone my dear learners then if i talk about further things that are dialogue second is dialogue now how are you like going to define dialogue since monologue is single talk to oneself communication with own with 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 uh, uh, suppose the character is talking to himself now what is all about dialogue dialogue is a two way process dialogue is a two way process where you all have to understand that one party is communicating with the other party that is called dialogue there has to be the necessity of having two characters two entities two parties for communication that is very much required now after that you must remember that dialogues origin according to middle english old french dialogue this is the term from where it has originated and further greek word if i talk about then dia log logos that is dia is through and if i talk about logos words or meanings through words that is the short form of it dia log so dialogue is a kind of interaction this is the two way process two way process where people interact with each other where two parties interact with each other they converse they clear their doubts sometimes they come up with their uh, views ideas they exhibit their true self you can say like that now further we'll move towards the next part as if i told you we will do it step by step and with that we are going to start with formal and informal conversation now as if i told you on a broader category your conversation would be into two categories which are these two categories 
one is formal and the second one is informal category why is it formal and informal what is the need of it you can definitely go on with informal everywhere no you cannot go on with that why because informal category and formal it depends on the situation and conditions plus the people you are talking with so remember my dear learners formal settings are required when we talk about with uh, an interaction in formal conversation then if you want to go on with informal you must remember that informal setting is required for that informal setting is required for that and along with that if informal setting is required this is the same or chief purpose behind that you can sit in a store room and then you can interact informally with anyone but that has to be face to face clear and you can definitely give a call if it is a call then definitely you can def uh, interact with anyone formal interaction also on one side you can you are sitting in the uh, store room and on the other side the other person is sitting in the uh, office so yeah face to face when we talk about face to face interaction it has to be face to face interaction yeah for face to face interaction all these formal and informal conversation settings and like essential uh, requirements are entered over here mentioned over here so formal settings and informal settings then further we have we have to be cautious about content which kind of content am i going to talk it should not be irrelevant it should not be uh, so homely it should be very refined and style obviously it has to be very formal you have to use refined vocabulary and you cannot go on with colloquial language slangs or something like that then it must be using formal language that i have already explained you along with that your approach will be also formal first you have to take the uh, like uh, uh, proposal first you have to just send the uh, the request and then further you have taken you have to take the appointment and then only you would be able to interact and converse with that person so this is very much important and if you want to go on with formal interaction it would be like that for example teacher with student for example manager with employee so all these things will be in formal category now we talk about informal setting if it is informal setting remember my dear students it will be it will be in the homely atmosphere where there are no bondage bo boundations of formal settings or there would be no boundation of any language there would be no boundation of any kind of uh, grammatical errors or using slangs for example friend talking with a friend that will be an informal conversation and if i talk about after 20 years after 20 years when uh, two characters after 20 years a famous uh, uh, a short story that was written by uh, o henry and in that condition he has very beautifully depicted the interaction between two uh, friends but uh, since it was supposed to be published it was written in a uh, in a different uh, a formal way but their interaction was really good we just go through that one and then further you would find that close and intimate relationship should be there between two parties if you are going to go on with informal setting like suppose you are talking to your mother that will be an informal conversation then there would be no restrictions of refined vocabulary that i have already introduced you or told you that there would be no restrictions no bond uh, boundations of using refined vocabulary and grammar so with this you all and and you obviously you must use simple language in that condition simple language simple diction but over here you have to use ostentatious or uh, very uh, refined refined vocabulary in that condition which will help you out to refined vocabulary which will help you out to learn to to express and to leave a very wonderful expression on the impression on the uh, listener 
then these are two ways, two ways of communication, one is uh, over telephone and one is on face to face. Now, when you talk about uh, over telephonic conversation, you must remember that when you talk about telephonic conversation, it will be related to, it will be completely related to something on social media suppose. In that condition, you must remember that while talking about phone, if you are interacting some with somebody, it is not at all necessary that it has to be informal communication. You can go on with formal in, uh, communication even because you might have heard about interviews. You might have heard about interviews on phone. Right. So, what is that an interview on phone? If somebody, if the manager HR gives you a call and asks you certain questions on phone, that would be obviously a formal uh, interaction, formal communication between two parties. So, it is not a big deal when it is, when somebody says that I am going to use formal language even on phone. So, it is not a, uh, like it is not a matter of question, putting a question whether it is face to face or over telephone, there would be there could be any kind of formal or informal interaction. Suppose now, now there has to be like again, there has to be two parties in that condition. Face to face, you need to have the body language. You must have that body language and in that case, there are many elements. What are they? First of all, your eye contact. Second, if you are talking about your body language, it has to be your hand gestures, your hand gestures, your facial expressions, your leg movements, your dress. You, you can talk about, if you talk about body language, obviously you can talk about your etiquettes and manners. All these things compile together when you come up for face to face interaction. But my dear learners, when you go on telephonic conversation, you can definitely use or avoid all these things, but only your voice matters a lot. In that condition, your voice modulation your voice modulation is very important. Along with that, your voice modulation, you must remember your stress. Where are you putting your stress? Then intonation. Then you must use correct grammar. Actually, correct grammar is required everywhere. Correct grammar and vocabulary. that is used everywhere that is like no matter it is a face to face interaction or telephonic conversation it would be same if somebody gives you a call hello am i talking to mr so and so the other party would say sorry he is not available over there or uh, sorry he is not available over here can i convey your message to the concerned person then the other party would say yes i gave a call to inform him that i would be reaching to meet him late in the evening at 7 o'clock, could you please convey the message to him according to the fixed time, according to the fixed schedule. So, the secretary from here will give the answer, yes of course, I would certainly tell, but please confirm the availability of your boss before landing up over here. So, all these telephonic conversations are like it depends how are you going to speak. Right? Understood everyone? So, stress, voice modulation, rise and falling intonation, they matter a lot when you speak on phone. You must, your voice must have that kind of uh, attraction, your voice must have that kind of like impact on the listener as well. So, all these things are very important when you talk about telephonic conversation. So, let us move up to the next field that is now coming to 
dialogue writing. We have already learned monologue, we have learned conversation, we have learned dialogues. We have learned on a broader category they would be divided into formal and informal. After moving from formal and informal we have learned how are they done, what is the process. Either they could be done through telephonic conversation or face to face conversation. So, there are several features which you have to understand and with live examples with some uh, relevant examples which are published in the form of novels and dramas and text I would certainly be able to tell you the details and intricacies of them. So, with that dialogue writing please remember that it is now I am going to come up with four aspects of conversation. Now, what are these four aspects? Now, what you have to remember is my dear learners that dialogue is the first one where two parties where two way of communication is required two way of communication and along with that two way of communication what is the purpose of dialogue the purpose of dialogue is to maintain relation between two parties between and exchange information between two parties suppose a is talking to b that person will be interacting with 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 c maybe or three people are together talking with each other. So, that is called dialogue. Now, if I talk about the another category which is debate, what is the purpose of debate? In that again we do have two parties, but the purpose is not only to give the information, but to convince the audience, but, the con but to convince the other person as well that okay, my points are on the top or my perception or my perspective is higher than yours. My ideas are or whatever like if I am on the for side or the other person is on against side that that is a kind of uh, like a kind of uh, argument which goes on. So, to win the argument is the sole purpose. When I talk about discourse, the discourse is again one way communication and the purpose is to only impart information. Discourse is only to impart information to the listener that is called discourse, but last, last not the least remember what is diatribe. These are some new technology, new, new terminologies for you my dear learners please remember because they are really very cool, very good and you must keep them in mind why because, because when you talk about all those things you should know what do you mean by diatribe. Diatribe are is, is actually one way communication, but the sole aim is to either motivate, inspire, persuade, convince the listeners or to if these people are against the speaker or they are not ready to uh, accept what he is saying. Then in that case uh, his speech is meant to bro beat him, bro beat the other listeners. So, in that condition bro beat is actually negating them or um, you can they pull them down. So, in that condition diatribe is tribe is one way process, one way communication and discourse is also in the same manner. Now, we shall move towards dialogue which is which is again the uh, soul of our lecture. We have learned several other things we have learned their importance, we have learned the types, we have learned how are they formed. Now, the time has come when you have to understand how these dialogues are formed, what are the essential requisites, then how these dialogues will be able to leave an indelible impact on the listener. How can you write a, a, a dialogue which is very inspiring for anyone? So, let us begin with that. These are the requisites of dialogue writing. Since I told you that dialogue writing must have two parties, first and the second one. You can have more parties as well, but at least they must there must be uh, an essential requirement of two parties. Now, in this condition there has to be double quotation mark when you talk about any any speech. Suppose Radha is talking to Shyam, now in this condition whatever Radha will speak it will be written in 
2 it will be written in quotation marks again quotation mark. So, remember point number 1 double quotation marks will be used whatever the speaker is speaking. Then further you should know that which are the punctuation marks you are going to use in it within the quote marks like all the punctuation work like suppose if I talk about he is suppose if I say Radha said let me clear yeah Radha said hmm. She purchased essential, she purchased essential commodities from the market. She purchased essential commodities from the market, then she put a comma over here and suppose she wants to raise a question for that. Now what will happen? How, how is she going to rate that question tag? She purchased essential commodities from the market that will use purchased will be in past tense that did and since it is in positive it will be in negative didn't and along with that didn't she and question mark inverted comma close. So, remember my dear learners that whatever punctuation mark you are using that will be within the quote marks that is the reason why I have given you this example so that you would be able to learn that these things comma question mark apostrophe all these things will come within that quotes. Is that clear everyone? There are few more examples in the coming uh, slide. You would be able to clear it. I am pretty much sure about that. So, remember punctuation marks will come on in the within the quote marks. And then further we talk about how to begin a well like every time when you talk about the speaker if he changes then in that condition your quotation mark along with that your paragraph will also change clear? Have I, have, I, have I made myself very clear my dear learners? Like if your speaker is changing, if A is talking to B, if B is talking to C in that condition remember that it will always, it will always change, you will always change a paragraph. After that dialogue tags, you have to use dialogue tags whenever you want to actually exhibit that there is a gap between them. For example, I am not opposed to change said Colin, if Uncle Simon wants to cook chicken for Thanksgiving, I really do not care. So, I really do not care is a dialogue tag. Then further, whenever mother goes to Paris, she used to smug, she always stops to Laudrio, Tams, Elysee for a dozen macarons, smug is again a dialogue tag. Then dialogue tags can be replaced with action beats. Sometimes we always use action beats also like it is not at all only every time you are going to go on with uh, dialogue tags. But you can use action beats that means how interesting dad turned on his heel like a TV lawyer. If neither of you take cookie then who did? So, remember my dear learners this thing dad turned on his heel like a TV lawyer it clearly indicates that it is something that action that action happened he put his heel. So, I hope you remember how is interesting this is a question how is interesting if you would you have not eaten anything then who has done it. So, in order to express his his feelings what he did dad turned on his heel like a TV lawyer. If neither of you take cookies then who did? This thing clearly indicates that you have to uh, everywhere you cannot go on with dialogue tags you can use action beats as well. 
Now remember as I told you that you have to put all, all punctuation marks within the quotes. This is a live example of it. Look at this. Question mark and then quotes ending. So with this we will move forward towards am dash. Now what is am dash? Am dash can be used to show the interpretation, the interruption of am dash can be used to show the interruption of speakers, long speech, whenever the speaker is giving long speech and, and the writer wants to show that okay, there has to be some kind of gap, otherwise this will create a boredom. So, in that condition am dash is used or pair of am dash is used. For example, sailor we only have 30 seconds before, now use of am dash. A deafening explosion was heard. So, this is called am dash. My dear learners, please keep in mind these terminologies might be new for you. Please keep them in mind. You have to use am dash, you have to use ellipses, you have to use dialogue tags. Many, many things are very important. Dialogue tags, okay. So, Use ellipses where long sentences are cut short. This is again a very important thing, ellipses. Ellipses are three dots either in the beginning or at the end, which clearly indicates that it is a long speech which has no end right now. So, we put ellipses over there. Now, use ellipses where long sentences are cut short. For example, if I say Vivek checked each of his pockets, I swear. I had my wallet. So, what is that? This is ellipsis. That means he is quite perplexed and he wants to tell something more about it. But he said, I swear I had my wallet. And he just put three dots. That clearly indicates, ellipsis clearly indicates that something is remaining. Some explanation is still pending. Ellipses are again a very important part of dialogues. Then you come up with single quotes, single quotes if a speaker quotes someone. For example, if I say, if, if uh, this is an example, he explained me, he double quotes, right? So, the, the inst, uh, like the whole thing, whatever words, whatever he said, it came in double quotes, but he wanted to quote somebody. So, in that condition, you will write down within single quotes. So, he exclaim, explained me, single quote start, the reason of train collision. So, now look at this part, I am just rubbing up all these things to make it very clear for you. Remember single quotes, if you are, if the speaker is quoting somebody else. So, he explained me the reason of train collision and then he left. Strange, Who? this is again what? Dialogue tag, dialogue tag, okay, understood everyone? So, this is a gap filler, a kind of, it clearly indicates whatever the writer, whatever the speaker is feeling all about, clear? So, dialogue tags are very important and one more thing that you have learnt over here is single quote within double quotes. Use italics to ind indicate monologue, this is very important. If ever, any time if you want to show that this person is thinking about, this person is thinking on his own and speaking to himself, in that condition you must remember that there has to be in italics. Radhika detected the burnt car, full stop. There is only one man in the city and she thought about those things, right? So, after detecting the burnt car, what Radhika thought? There is only one man in the city who owns that model. She thought, Ronnie. So, what does it clearly indicate? You remember my dear learners that every, that this monologue will be written in italics. You might have read about three options on the, on the computer when you talk about word, it is bold, underline and the third one is italics. So, this is what 
italics should be used should be italics should be used in order to indicate monologues. So, these are few requisites of dialogue writing my dear learners you all please pay attention towards it because they are very important use of dialogue tags use of italics in monologue then use of ellipses then further putting single quotes and using single quotes with double quotes if you want to quote somebody then there are there is an example of m dash m dash if it is a long interaction then you must know that it has to be uh, comprised with m dash e m d a s h that is signified like this i have already given you this example right so with this note we'll move forward towards several other examples of dialogue tags so that this idea may be may become very clear to you that what are dialogue tags a dialogue tag is a phrase that comes first breaks up or follows a bit of written dialogues anything that you have written it either uh, puts a break into it divide it into two parts or it will come either in the beginning expressing you the feelings of the speaker and maybe sometimes at the end briskly briskly comma he asked for some help now he asked for some help so briskly now further we'll come up with some examples some uh, small uh, and it ascertains now what is the use of these dialogue tags they are who is the speaker it will tell you about the speaker's identity who is the speaker second you must know that the way of delivering the dialogue how is he trying to deliver the dialogue which is very important the way and then you must confirm whether the new speaker is talking or not if the first speaker has completed the new speaker will start speaking after that dialogue tag may many times it happens and it helps to identify the speaker which is very important you can identify who is speaking is it um, a b or c clear so you must keep that in mind if there is a change in the character's speech if the character if the speaker changes then also you can find that that dialogue ta tag you can uh, know the mood the the behavior the expressions of the speaker through dialogue tags then you would be able to learn who is speaking so all these things will come into consideration when you talk about dialogue tags then further like like, uh, like this example i hate this restaurant this clearly indicates that uh, somebody hates the restaurant and uh, while speaking about all those things he ended up with this now dialogue tags are always punctuated with comma so and unless the speech is interrupted and a new sentence begins with a capital letter so after that this thing if the speech continues uninterrupted stops it will begin with a capital letter it will begin with a capital letter then further you must remember that what are ellipses now in this condition what are ellipses ellipses if you know everyone these are three dots we have already i have already explained you earlier there are these are three dots they are a part of punctuation mark as well and this is again now look, look at this it exhibits the omission of one or more words by using three dots this is actually known as ellipses is that clear everyone along with that you must know that it is supplied to make a construction grammatically complete because many times it's a long speech where you have to put a break where you have to just show that something is in continuation with it so i dreamt i dreamt dot 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 ellipses so this is what i dreamt what i'm not going to disclose everything to anyone in that condition but i dreamt so this is called ellipses now further if i talk about it is supplied to make the construction grammatically correct yeah it will convey the entire meaning to the listener and a sudden leap from one topic to another if somebody wants to talk about his aim his goal 
and then he wants to talk about his future plans and then further he wants to talk about his past that is his background, college background. So, one, from 1 to 2nd and 3rd, if he wants to sudden leap, if he wants to leap, if he wants to such switch from one theme to other, in that condition this is very helpful. And obviously, it is marked like this indicating an omission as of words or a pause, it is a kind of like that. According to Merriam Webster dictionary, I have just taken up these, uh, this particular uh, meanings. So, with this note, we will move forward towards types of dialogue writing, they are very important. When you talk about dialogue writing, they are of three types, conversational, if it is conversational, interaction between two parties will be there. After interaction, if it is there, like there would be a cordial manner, two people are talking in a very normal manner. If they are sitting in a railway compartment, what will happen? They will just minutely speak with them, speak with each other in a normal manner. You might, you, you can definitely observe people talking very coolly. That is a normal conversation and amicable, cordial manner. Second is enquiry. Enquiry dialogue is when one question, one person raises the uh, question and the other tries to resolve that answer, that question. So, one raises the question and the other tries to resolve it. So, this is called enquiry and in this case, uh, like uh, there could be police officer and the uh, lawbreaker, it could be the prisoner and police officer, it could be, yeah, in an interview there could be like uh, inquiry about your background, there could be event while, while giving the project presentation, obviously you would be asked, would be inquired about how did you convert, conduct the survey. So, all those things will come in inquiry, but you have to draft them very well. So, and, and several dramas are also, several novels are also written on the basis of that. I have just come up with, uh, I have added those things in the next slide. There would be negotiational dialogues. Negotiation dialogues, what do you mean by that? Have you ever gone to any place where you have done bargaining? My dear learners, yes, obviously, everyone and everyone I think, like everyone and anyone over here sitting in front of me might have done that bargaining at any level, right, with, with vendors, maybe sometimes with shopkeepers, maybe sometimes with other people. So, that is what negotiation dialogues. You may talk about, you may talk about prices at uh, stock market or you may talk about like uh, if I talk about uh, going to the market and talking to the vendor, maybe sometimes in the fate or any other, maybe sometimes, sometimes talking about tender. If you talk about tenders, then also like negotiations are going on, negotiation uh, dialogues are there. So, with this note, basically the consensus to reach in onto one consensus is the target of negotiation dialogues. And along with that, it may arrive at amicable resolution. Amicable resolution means both the parties will, will be convinced, will land up to a single uh, decision. Okay, I will purchase it at uh, uh, 500 bucks or uh, 3000 bucks and uh, the other person, the other uh, seller would say that yes, yes, yes. And could be formal and semi-formal. It could be semi-formal or formal. Then further we will move towards their examples. Now, please read them very carefully. We do, I do have uh, like uh, several more examples for you. So just highlight the main part. Now, this is a normal conversation which is going on between two friends. That is an example of informal conversation where the last leaf, O Henry, I have taken this one, where, where it is written, what is it dear? question mark, question mark, please pay attention that question mark is within the quotes, point number 1. Further, ask Sue, 6, said John C. In almost a whisper, they are, they are falling shorter now, 3 days ago, there are, there were almost a 100. It made my headache to count them, but now it is easy. There goes another one, there are only 5 left now. 5, what dear, tell your sudi, leaves on the ivy vine, 
when the last leaf, last one falls, I must go too. I have known that for three days. Didn't the doctor tell you? Oh, I never heard of such nonsense. Complained Sue. Now further the whole interaction goes on in a very simple colloquial language, right? Colloquial language. There is no artificiality. There is no uh, stylistic patterns or difficult words for which a person has to use any kind of dictionary. And several rules that I have told you, it will be written in capital letters. And uh, then further, let us see exactly. So, let us go on with that. What have old ivy leaves to do with your getting well? And you used to love that wine, so you naughty girl. Don't be goosey. Why the doctor told me this morning said your chances for getting well soon were. Now, look at this part. What is that? This is M dash. This is M dash, remember. As I told you, when there is a long interaction between two parties and there is a long speech, we use dash, M dash. Let us see exactly what he said. Again, M dash. Pair of M dash is used over here. He said the chances were 10 to 1. You need not get any more wine, comma, with, within, within this double quotes, said John C., keeping her eyes fixed out of the window. There goes another one. No, I do not want any broth. That leaves just four. I want to see the last one fall before it gets dark. Then I will go too. And that is with this we will move forward towards the other one. That is, eyes are not here, Ruskin bond. So, in our previous uh, slide, you people have understood using uh, single quotes, using, using double quotes when the person is speaking and putting all the punctuation marks within that quotes only and we have learnt M dash, use of M dash. Now looking at this example, eyes are not here which is written by Ruskin Bond. I have taken it from there. Now my dear learners, eyes are not here is a wonderful story between uh, and, and, and there is a psychological analysis of the, uh, the person who is sitting in the compartment. And uh, thereafter, you will notice that this is what happened at that time. We will notice something like interaction between the boy, the blind man and the, uh, the fellow companion. So now look at this. Are you going all the way to the Hera? I asked. I must have been sitting in the dark corner. Now look at this line. What is that? I must be, must have been sitting in the dark corner. Because my voice startled her, she got surprised. She gave a little exclamation and said, now this thing, look at this particular line only. I must have been sitting in the dark corner because my voice startled her. This is an example of what? I am leaving it to you. Come on, tell me. My dear learners, what is that? He is thinking it on his own. This is an example of monologue. Let me let me write it properly so that you people may understand. Mono, L O G U E, right? So he's trying to write down. He's trying to imagine. She gave a little exclamation and said, "I didn't know anyone else was here." Well, it often happens that people with good eyesight fail to see what is right in front of them. They have too much to take in, I suppose. Whereas people who cannot see or see very little have to take in only the essentials, whatever registers or most tellingly on their remaining senses. Now, look at this coming line if I say, I did not if I would be able to prevent her from discovering that I was blind and I thought provided I keep to my seat, I should not be too difficult. So, it is a live example of again monologue. Yes, it is an example of monologue everyone please pay attention and then where are you going she said so in this condition this over here she was silent i wondered if my words had touched her again we have the example of monologue 
So, this is what like I am going to read out everything. Yes, this is the best time I said calling on my memories. The hills are covered with wild dahlias, sun is delicious at night and many other. So, it is a wonderful creation where you would get several examples of monologue. With the, with the, with along with the dialogues, you will get an exam, get few more examples of monologues as well. So, that inner feelings of the character would be depicted. Inquiry dialogues are those dialogues which are given in order to search something. Now, let me come up with the example of God sees the truth but waits by Leo Tolstoy. He has wonderfully explained that how those police officers came and interrogated Eskionov. In that particular story where he was a simple merchant coming from Nazni's fair and thereafter he suffered a lot. So, looking at this example, Askinov answered him fully and said, won't you have some tea with me? But the official went on cross checking, cross questioning him and asking him, where did you spend last night? Were you alone or with a fellow merchant? Did you see the other merchant this morning? Why did you leave the inn before dawn? There are many, many questions out there. So, this is what inquiry is. This is what investigation is. Remember my dear learners, their inquiry dialogues will be having questions, will be having questions and the other person will be giving the resolution to them. So, why did you cross question as if I were a thief or a robber? So, this is an answer to this question, but everything is written within quotes. Remember my dear learners. Then further he said, I, look at this line, M dash, I, I do not know, not mine. This clearly indicates that there are few more examples of M dash, where the person does not have to say anything. How is he going to ex ex examine and just explain everything? So, this is again a wonderful example of M dash inquiry dialogues. Then further we have negotiational dialogues. Negotiation is as if I told you every time in our life we negotiate. There uh, I have taken an example of Panch Parmeshwar Munshi Premchand is written by, uh, by, by Munshi Premchand and he has very beautifully delineated the characters of Algu Chaudhary and Jumman where these characters they depicted their, their, uh, their dialogues through dialogues and conversation their characters are revealed. So, there was an aunt said Jumman, son. This is a negotiation. Son, I can't carry on like this. You pay me some regularly. I shall set up my own kitchen. Then what is the negotiation got, got about? Jumman retorted rudely. Retorted rudely again. This is what? This is a dialogue tag. Do you think we grow money here? Khala asked politely. Do I? Do I need not? Do I not need a bare minimum? Juman replied sternly, we had never thought you had conquered death. So, this is a kind of negotiation and thereafter she went to the Panchayat, Panch Parmeshwar, the Panchayat. So, that was a kind of negotiation where, where both the parties, they come amicably on some part, on some decision. So, with this note, we will come forward because I have in the first, in the last paragraph, in these paragraphs, I have just come up with that how uh, she got the decision in her favor. And then further, we will go on with the guidelines of a good speaker. The good speaker would be a good listener and proper facial expressions, confidence and politeness, clarity of vision. Anyone can be a good speaker in that condition and the purpose of it is communication than self-expression. It must uh, build up the readability, reliability between two people that okay, I am ready to rely on A uh, character or B character. So, and, and to be acquainted with others, with others, initiate negotiations and uh, obviously, if it is a negotiation dialogues and promote decision making, that is for sure. Now, with this note, we come to the conclusion part where dialogues are really very important if you want to be a good speaker if you want to express yourself very well. It comprises of information, request, questions and answers. It involves a specific purpose. Without any purpose, obviously, you would not talk with anyone, converse with anyone or interact with anyone. Aim of conversation is to discuss and resolve some problems. 
So, last but not the least, I would like to quote uh, Ayak Walton that good company and good discourse are very sinew of virtue. And finally, Paula Ferrara said, dialogue cannot exist without humility. So, my dear learners, please maintain that humility if you want to be a good speaker. With this note, I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, signing off for now. Keep speaking, keep charming, keep, keep speaking and learning a lot everyone. So, bye for now. Thank you. And these are the references that I have taken, that I have referred to, my dear learners. Thank you.